大家好。Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Really appreciate the invitation. Commonwealth Magazine is one of my most read media publications in Taiwan, so it's a huge honor. My name is Margarita Pekka. I am the general manager for Uber in Taiwan. I've been in your beautiful country for three years. Although I'm sorry to say, wo jong wen hai bu go hao. So, tai nan le. I'm going to do this in English. So thank you so much in advance. And before you ask, yes. So I think most people in the room know Uber already. Can I ask everyone to raise their hand if they've taken an Uber ride anywhere in the world? <laughs> Can you keep your hand raised if you've taken an Uber ride in Taiwan as well? Good. Can get a few more up. No, look, we're very proud. We are the largest mobility platform in the world. We are live in now over 74 countries, 10,000 cities, and what you see if you use Uber overseas is we have a very broad range of products that we use. So I know in Taiwan we mostly have multi-purpose taxis, green, yellow taxi, but if you travel to other markets, we have three wheelers, two wheelers, buses, trains, planes, and hopefully this is a sign of what can one day be here in Taiwan. Of course, in Taiwan, Uber Eats is even bigger,、uh, and it's a network we've now over got one million partners with merchants around the world. We're live in more cities with Uber Eats than than in rides, so、um, I think that presence is certainly felt here. So, with such a big presence, we have some pretty big numbers. We're now at the point where there's over one million rides and orders every hour of the day, and. With that scale, we have seven million earners. My father is an Uber driver back in Australia. We have 150 million people using our apps every month, and really, there are two things that come with that. Number one, we have to have the technology to to make this work. We have over 150 million reads per second in our engineering data infrastructure to service this level of volume. And number two. At this level of scale, we have a responsibility. We really have to show up for our cities, our earners, and our riders. So that's what I'll talk about today. So the theme of today is a smarter city. Let's get into it. Really proud that we're up to 98% coverage in Taiwan. I know this has to be 100. We're working on it. If I was speaking last year, we were only in 11 cities with Uber rides. So from 11 to 16, we've already scaled recently. And one reason we've been able to come to more cities in Taiwan is because of the launch of Uber Taxi. So we now partner with Yellow Taxis all around the country to offer you the Yellow Taxi ride that you trust for the same price. Cheaper if you're an Uber One member, but the same price with extra safety and technology via the Uber app. And Uber Eats, as you know, we are still expanding Uber Eats. We launched Jinmin recently, so、um, very excited to be reaching more Taiwanese communities. And when we talk about the infrastructure, it's an interesting thing. I know AI is very common talk about now. It's a, it's a generative and AI has created a big boom, but AI has been at the core of our product since day one. Behind a single action, one click that you take, there can be over 400 machine learning models powering that action. And so, hopefully, to you it seems a really simple. In Taiwan, we've got、uh, average ETAs about three to four minutes, but behind that, it's a very complex and、uh, big system. I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to try and explain it to you. But I'll give you one really simple example. We want to make it really easy in Uber rides for you to go from A to B. And I think what people don't realise is that's actually very complicated. So if you have this example, let's have Mr. Chen up here. He wants to request a ride, and he's next to two cars. And as you can see, one car is technically much closer、uh, than another car. But the thing is, we have so much great predictive technology, data, patterns, and trends and insights that we know that if we wait one more second, Mr. Wu is not the only person, Mr. Chen, <laughs>、uh, ordering a ride. Let's go. We can call her Miss Wu.、Uh, so, in a second, we're going to have a second request. And if we had matched Mr. Chen to the first car, he would only be waiting two minutes, but Miss Wu would be waiting nine minutes. And for our cities, this is not a good outcome. We have created 11 minutes of wait time. Drivers don't like it. It makes you, as a rider, much slower and later. And so, we have to leverage our technology to figure out the best matching. In real time, we're able to understand, assess, and accurately predict what is the best outcome. 
As you can see, if we give Mr Chen a slightly further away car, he'll wait four minutes. But that means Miss Wu also only waits four minutes. And we've only created eight minutes for the whole city. Because it's really true what um, uh, we heard earlier today, that these businesses only exist in the context of the cities and the soil they are on. We exist to help our people, our cities. We want to reduce congestion. We want to improve efficiency and reliability and make sure that our earners are making the most they can on the road. Now, beyond um, the general core of our business, we're also starting to lean a lot more into making sure that we cater our technology to your very personal needs. I know family is a very big thing in Taiwan. It's so important to this culture, and our product should start to show you that. As you may have seen, we launched Uber for Teens recently. Now, if you are a guardian or a parent, you can create an account for your teenager and invite them to join with their own safe Uber for Teen product. Once an Uber Teen has their own account, they request a ride. It's very different to how you request a ride. We turn on more and forced safety features. So there is no teen trip that can start without a verified PIN. When that driver arrives, it's a more experienced driver. They've got a impeccable safety record, and um, what happens is, in that car, there is a forced audio recording. So there is no unmonitored trip where your teen is there on, with, on their own, effectively. And most importantly, as a guardian, you get notified when your teen books trips, and whether you've booked it or they have booked it, you can follow along, you can even call the driver directly. So we know this has given parents a lot of reassurance. In Taiwan, we're really seeing this help parents um, get their children between regular school and cram school because a lot of people are still working at that time. And the one thing we've added recently is a great bonus is now anything that your teen does, you get the perks. So Uber One is our membership program. You get cash back on every single trip. So, um, you know, you can get your teen to go to school and then you get some cash to spend on Uber Eats for yourself. Now, the other thing that we really hear is many people who have teenagers are in that stage of life where they're sort of double parenting. They're parenting their children and they're parenting their parents. And so we want to make sure that it's easy for you with your seniors as well. So we also introduced senior accounts. We know that mobility and independence is not important for just young people, but for older folks as well. So we've created a different version of the app that you can invite your parent or any other senior in your life to join. And it looks much simpler, so every screen is a little bit like easier to read. There's less information if we think it's not necessary. And we even do things like um, allow you to uh, make it very easy, sorry, get excited, um, to coordinate. So, you know, we found that when we were testing this with older adults, they were finding it hard to type in specific addresses every time. So now they've got that, you know, you can set it up so your senior has your house saved already. And again, just like the teenagers, you can call the driver directly. You can follow along so that there's safety and peace of mind. The really cool thing we found, actually, is the majority of people so far in Taiwan who are using this are new to Uber. They've never used the app before. But once they have this account, 80% of them book their own ride. They're not relying on their guardian, their family member to do it for them. So we're seeing this beautiful independence. And so there's this freedom of, you know, originally we were wondering who should pay for the ride. But what we found is seniors want the flexibility. And so, um, you know, docker -y. They can pay, you can pay, everyone's happy. Now, if you're trusting us with your movement and your teenagers and your, your family members, we have a responsibility. Stand for Safety is a value of ours. It is always our priority. No matter how the business changes, we will never drop safety as our priority. And actually, something I'm really proud about in Taiwan, um, I've, you know, when I arrived, I've spoken to a lot of people uh, who remember how the taxi industry used to be. And probably the thing I hear the most is, thank you for um, elevating the safety of the taxi industry, the quality, the service, and the experience. Our average driver rating in Taiwan is the highest in the world, 4.94. But you don't have to just rely on good quality drivers. We have technology. So we were introducing things like the ability to share your ride uh, whenever you're on a trip. Drivers get speed limit alerts. Um, we have seatbelt reminder notifications. I'm sure you guys have seen that. And I think that's a really interesting example because to me it's like, oh, like, does that really work? People know about the seatbelt. Do you have to really remind them? But we've seen statistically significant improvements in the number of people using their seatbelt just from this push notification. So it's really changing behaviour. 
And the other thing that's very great in Taiwan is we recently introduced a driving hour limit. So a driver cannot be on the road driving for more than 12 hours. We know that after 12 hours, the likelihood of an accident increases. And we've implemented this around the world. But to be honest, the reason drivers come to Uber is for the great earnings. And what we see in other countries is when you try and implement this, many drivers resist because you know, they are trying to maximize how much money they take home to their family. They might be trying to work 18, 20 hours a day to bring home more money. But actually, when we did this in Taiwan, the driver response was, I understand, and I think you're correct. We should put safety above profits. And that was a message that we heard back from our drivers, and it just was such a beautiful reminder to me of the responsibility and the care that our earning population has here. And you know, we, we have so many driver partners who've been with us for seven, eight, nine years. And whenever I meet them, I was at an event last week, you just, you really feel the heart. We have another value called build with heart. This is internal Uber stuff. But you know, when I meet these drivers, I feel the build with heart in our driver partners. And I think this launch was really a sign of that. So just for fun, people like to know what's next. So we've got two things coming up. The first is a really cool thing called record my ride. This actually lets a driver turn their phone into a camera. So the front selfie camera becomes a video recording device if they want to turn it on and, and the rider will see this. Um, and that effectively creates more safety and security for the driver and the rider because there is audio and video recording happening in the ride. And the other thing you might see is um, we have some women drivers in this market and we want to make sure those female drivers feel as comfortable and safe as possible. And sometimes our female drivers don't feel quite as safe, say, driving late night, you know, Saturday nights, which actually is a pretty good time to, to drive because the earnings are high, it's a very busy time of the week. And so we're introducing a feature that lets a female driver choose that they only want to be matched with female and non-binary riders. And this is something that helps them have peace of mind because some women will just feel uh, safer that way. And in Taiwan, we have a bunch of local partnerships that are really making improvements. We have partnered with um, Honda to have virtual motorcycle simulation training for our Uber Eats delivery partners. We also have um, a really innovative virtual reality safe driving program um, that really uh, it simulates how much it is, um, how easy it is to, to drive more safely. Uh, we have partnered with the Taipei um, uh, MOV to have a safe driving incentive program. This recognizes and rewards drivers with a perfect track record on safety. And actually what we've seen is 90% of the driver partners involved in that program qualify for the incentive. So we can definitely see the behavior change there. And lastly, we have partnered with Shunghua University. And this is about an online safety course because um, the virtual reality is great, but you have to go somewhere. And we wanted something that could be done from home uh, in comfort and time that they have. And lastly, I'll talk about our sustainable future. So very cool to say, in Taiwan, actually, we have one of the largest Uber Green products. One in five trips today are booked in Taiwan using Uber Green. Canada also does quite well. Um, and what we're really excited about is, while well, you know that at the moment, Uber Green is a hybrid product in Taiwan. It's um, hybrid and fully electric cars. Um, but we want Uber Green globally to be a fully electric product. So recently we launched something called Comfort Electric, which is a more premium uh, electric ride. But we think you shouldn't have to pay more uh, just to have an electric ride every day. So we have now announced that we are transitioning Uber Green, and this will be fully electric next year. And when that happens, let me tell you what gonna, you're going to see on your side. If you don't know, everyone in their Uber app has um, a emission savings area. So you can go to your account and you'll see a little green icon. This is my screenshot from my app yesterday. Um, and as you can see, I've had 438 Uber green rides. It would have been 439 after this morning. Um, and I've saved 55, uh, I did this in Chinese, 55 tons of, um, of carbon emissions. Um, and but you can see that one Comfort electric ride was almost half a kilo. So the more EV cars we can have on here, the more you will be able to save and track in your app. The tricky thing is we need more electric vehicles on the road. We're lucky. Drivers generally adopt 
um, electric vehicles at a five times faster rate than general population. And if you look at Uber globally, we're really proud that in Q1 this year, we had 60% more electric cars than last year. But there is still not enough electric cars on our roads in Taiwan and not enough cars um, uh, for you and Uber. That's why we have to announce ahead of next year's launch, I would have loved to have transitioned straight away. So the thing that drivers really care about is um, reducing the anxiety of understanding how their battery will be and uh, being able to plan their earnings better. So most of our tech on this topic has really been on the driver side. We have things like an integrated charging map so the drivers can see where the charging is around them. We have something called battery aware matching. I'm going to come back to that. We're going to make it really easy for drivers to see when is the optimal time to stop Get a, get a charge, and also um, uh, where they should go. We make recommendations based on price, location, partnerships they have, and leveraging our big platform in Taiwan, we're hoping to have more partnership with our merchants so that we get to the point where if a driver wants to break, recharge, they can also have perhaps a subsidized tea or lunch with one of our partners, and that's something we'll work on in the future. But I'm gonna double click on something that I just love, um, something people get really concerned about with EVs is what if the battery runs out? What if the driver can't get to me? I had a really um, challenging experience in, Thai in Thailand last year with a, a different app. I was very excited to book an EV car. It was a reserve trip, so I knew it was coming ahead of time. And on the way over, the driver messages me. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to be 20 minutes late. I need to recharge. I was like, oh, okay, that's all right. I don't want to, but that's fine. It was a three-hour drive, so 20 minutes wasn't too bad. And then he, he arrives 25 minutes later, we get in there, and halfway through the drive, you, I could tell he was getting stressed out and like worrying, and effectively he'd run out of battery, and so we had to pull over and again wait another 30 minutes to recharge, and he was so stressed out. The poor man went and bought me fruit and water. Um, I was late, but I felt bad, so I couldn't be angry, and so you sort of sit there, and it's this awful, <laughs> very slow, painful moment. Um, but, you know, that app that competitor app overseas didn't have this feature. And so we don't have that anxiety. We will only give a driver a trip if we know that his battery or her battery life can actually complete the trip. And on delivery, we're really proud that already 20% of our deliveries are done in a zero um, carbon emission vehicle. And we've got a great partnership with Gogoro who, because we are aiming to get that to 50% and much higher soon. And something we hear time and time again, we have over 1,700 Uber for Business partners. Um, if your business is not on Uber, please let me know. But uh, we have a lot of clients, and what we hear a lot is there's a big move towards ESG and making sure that people's um, carbon emissions on their business travel is reducing. So we have a uh, special dashboard that we offer businesses. And what we see is already one third of all of our business travelers are choosing to go green or comfort electric. So this is certainly something that our businesses are driving and, and something that they're manifesting through their employees. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Shishinimin. Shishinimin.